In the previous several videos, I've discussed non-stationarities, signal non-stationarities, what they mean, how they manifest, and I showed you that signal non-stationarities can make the results of the Fourier transform difficult to interpret visually. So one of the solutions for dealing with signal non-stationarities is something called Welch's method. This helps with non-stationarities. It also gives a smoother result. So the results of the Fourier transform will be a bit smoother and therefore easier to interpret with Welch's method. This is named after the mathematician Welch, and I believe this method was first published in the 1950s. So it's actually a pretty straightforward concept, as you will see in the next slide. And then I'll also discuss some of the parameters that you can pick, and I will uh, talk about the difference between what I'll call here the full FFT and the Welch's method. Okay, so what is the full FFT? Well, that's basically just doing one Fourier transform over the entire duration of the signal. So for example, here we have our time domain signal, and we do one FFT, one Fourier transform on the entire signal. And that gives us a power spectrum that might look like this. So totally fine, there's nothing wrong with this procedure. I'm calling this the full FFT method. But you can see there are a lot of non-stationarities and temporal dynamics in this time domain signal. So for example, here you see when you look in the power spectrum, you see very clearly that there is a peak at this frequency range. And you know I don't have the labels in here, but this is somewhere around 40 to 50 hertz. So you see that there is a peak in the gamma frequency range here. However, just from looking at this Fourier transform result, you have no idea where this signal appears, where this feature of the data appears in time. Is there a continuous gamma oscillation in the signal? Or are there occasional bursts in the time domain? Or is it all concentrated in one time period, which is actually the case? Now, of course, you can see that in the time domain signal, but the point is, you don't know about the temporal dynamics and the non-stationarities just from looking at this frequency domain signal. Okay, so this is what I will call the full FFT method. And now let's talk about Welch's method. So the idea of Welch's method is that instead of doing the Fourier transform on the entire time window, you just isolate a little piece of the data. So let's say you take this much data, maybe this is I don't know, 200 milliseconds. This is one of the parameters of, the, of Welch's method. You have to decide how wide to make this time window here. So you take these data, you kind of cut out this snippet, you isolate this snippet, ignore the rest of this time series. So that looks like this. You also have to taper these data. I'll, I will talk about tapering in a few slides. But essentially, it's like pinching the ends of the signal so that the beginning and the end are going to zero. And then with this little snippet, we take the Fourier transform and we compute the power spectrum, and that looks like this. So this is the power spectrum, not of the entire signal, but just of this little snippet, this little piece of the signal. Okay, and then what we do, you've probably already guessed, we take another little snippet of the signal. So you can see, in this case, the window is the same size. So if this is 200 milliseconds, and this is also, let's say, 200 milliseconds. And here's another parameter of Welch's method, which is whether and how much to overlap these two windows. So what you see is, now I'm overlapping by 50%. So 50% of the, so the second window starts at 50% of the way through the first time window. Okay, so then we, take out this little snippet of data here. Again, apply a taper, which means, you know, sort of pinching off the start and the end points, and then take the Fourier transform of this snippet. So now we see that the power spectrum here looks a little bit different from how it looked here, and so on and so on and so on. And then here I'm just drawing another snippet over here. And then its power spectrum looks something like this. And then what do we do? You guessed it, we average all of these power spectra together. So notice that we are still ending up 
with the spectral characteristics of the entire signal. However, we are putting that spectrum together one piece at a time. Here you see a comparison of Welch's method and the full FFT. So again, this cyan line here, this, this greenish line, this is the power spectrum resulting from one Fourier transform over the entire signal that looks like this. And then what you see in blue here is the result of Welch's method. And you can see that they are overall quite similar. Welch's method is much smoother. It gives a much smoother spectrum. And that is generally the result of Welch's method. It's going to smooth out the power spectrum quite a bit. Now I'm going to talk briefly about tapering. So here in blue, in dark blue, is the original signal. This is the data SNP. So this would be, you know, 200 milliseconds or whatever from the in longer time series. And then here in cyan, we have a taper. This particular one is called a Han taper. You can see it looks a little bit like a Gaussian. It's fairly close to a Gaussian. In fact, it's defined as a cosine wave, so it's half of a cosine wave. There's a bunch of different tapers. There's Han and Hamming and Kaiser and Ray's cosine and Gaussian, and I'm, I'm sure I'm missing uh, another, a couple more. But anyway, all of these tapers generally look quite similar. And then what you do is taper the signal, and you end up with this orange signal. So you can see that it's pinching off towards zero at the beginning and at the end, and it is full amplitude in the middle. Now, the reason for the taper is that you have edges here and edges here. So these edges are going to cause artifacts in the Fourier transform. These are edge effects. Essentially, these are strong non-stationarities that take a lot of energy at a lot of frequencies for the Fourier transform to represent. So we taper the data to minimize the amount of edge effects contaminating the power spectrum. Now you can also see that uh, we are getting rid of a lot of valid data. So there's nothing wrong with the data here in the blue signal, and yet we are tapering this down. So we are attenuating valid signal. That is one of the motivations for uh, having these windows overlap. So this part of the signal here is attenuated by the taper in this window. But in this window, we actually get this tapered piece to be at full amplitude. So that's why having some overlap is generally a good idea. Okay, so now I've introduced you to Welch's method and you already know about the full FFT method. And now I'm just gonna talk a little bit about comparing the these two methods. So the full FFT method is a bit sensitive to noise and it's more sensitive to non-stationarities. And Welch's method smooths over non-systematic noise and it's robust to some kinds of non-stationarity. So why is this the case? Let me go back to this slide. Now imagine we have, uh, imagine this was like an artifact here. There was uh, an edge, there was some spike in the data. In the full FFT, this is getting into the FFT. But when using Welch's method, this artifact here, I mean, I, I don't think this is an actual artifact, but let's imagine there was a little noise spike in the data here. Then this uh, little artifact is actually only going to affect, you know, two or three of these little data snippets out of a total of, you know, let's say there's 30 data snippets in total, and only two of them are affected by this noise spike. So now this noise spike gets averaged out. It's getting smoothed out. On the other hand, the full FFT method has maximal spectral precision, and the Welch's method has reduced as lower spectral precision, lower frequency precision. Why is that the case? Right, that's the case because remember that the frequency resolution in the Fourier transform is determined entirely by the number of time points. Well, for a fixed sampling rate, the frequency resolution is determined by the number of time points in the signal. And so for the full FFT, we have as many points as possible. We have lots and lots of data points. And with Welch's method, we are taking only small snippets of the data. And so therefore, the number of time points is reduced. 
even though the sampling rate is the same, so the spectral resolution is actually much lower. Now, whether that's really a bad thing or a neutral thing depends on the frequencies at which the dynamics in your signal are happening. But, you know, something to keep in mind. And a disadvantage of both of these methods is that they still do not allow us to visualize the temporal dynamics in the signal. Now, you can probably already guess what would be the way to adapt Welch's method to uncovering or preserving the temporal dynamics. And that would be, instead of averaging all these spectra together, you look at each spectra separately and you plot them you know, along the x-axis to preserve the changes in dynamics over time. Now, technically that is not Welch's method, that's called a spectrogram or the short time Fourier transform. I'm gonna talk more about that in the next section on time frequency analyses. So you can already guess where we are going to be going with this. But formally, Welch's method still results in one spectrum that looks like this. It is a smoothed version of the full FFT spectrum.